River, there's a good look inside Everbank Stadium here in downtown Jacksonville. Today, we've got a fun little clash in the AFC as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. A man coming off an 1,100-yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. He had to fight that time. Ran through one tackle, but ultimately, he's only going to get back to the line of scrimmage. He couldn't get the edge there. wasn't sealed, so maybe not all on the guy running the football all the time on those tosses and the pitches that go to the outside. No, not at all. I would agree with that totally because sometimes the defensive guys, they win the edge battle. And when they do that, there's no place for the running back to go, and especially for offensive linemen trying to get out ahead. With their footwork and speed, it was negligible on that play. No gain at all for the offense. They'll wind up losing three here on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 12. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying it is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. So on fourth down, here's Logan Cook to punt for Jacksonville. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Now a three-time 1,000-yard rusher, Joe Mixon. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. So a big penalty there on the face mask leads to first and 10. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Oh, the first play of the game going to be intercepted. And the Jaguars are going to get possession here as they force the opening drive turnover. A very good starting field position for the Jaguars offense as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Now a throw right side taken in here to start this drive. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A well-executed 22-yard gain. That's his first catch of the game and an impressive one against multiple defenders. And how about that start? Really aggressive. Yeah, there was double coverage out there, but that didn't stop them at all. They went right at it and defeated it on that play. Throw right side is going to be caught by Kirk. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Lawrence will throw. And a dangerous throw there on the drop-off. Incomplete, nearly intercepted. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Here's Lawrence. This one complete to Christian Kirk. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. We're backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. They were maybe hoping for a little bit of a back shoulder fade there, and that's a play that's been in vogue the last few years in all aspects of football. But they couldn't get the hook up there. Field goal. 
And he put enough leg into it, but it's well off to the right and no good. Two sides to every coin. This is the bad side of missing the 58-yarder. Now they start at the 48. So it's an empty trip downfield there as they get a missed field goal on fourth down. And I didn't see anything in the setup. It's a good snap, good hold. Yep. He just pushed it, and that one never wanted to come back. He'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forcing incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. On second down, here's Mixon. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. From midfield now, Burrow. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. No surprise at all. They're looking for the big man early in this one. The only surprise for them, he couldn't hang on to the pass. So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. Back deep for Jacksonville, the dangerous Jamal Agnew. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. Give them 12 yards on that one, it earns him a fresh set of downs. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. That's going to be caught by Kirk. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. They got five through the air, last play, now five on the ground, first and ten. It's great seeing that type of run from ETN, and look, I know we couldn't consider him for rookie of the year last year, but it really was his rookie season since an injury cost him all 2021. And he looked like a rookie of the year. Ninth in the NFL with over 1,100 yards for a surging Jaguars offense. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. From the 44-yard line, here's second and six. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. No score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football. They'll come up facing third and five. As they've got it as we resume action. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. The Clemson product, DJ Reader, got in for the sack. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Now Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. The Bengals drive about to get going. 
And partner, I know so far, and we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy. Zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. But you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right, where these teams are locked in and going at it, no points going up on the scoreboard. I'm loving it. You're exactly right. Well, switch over, though, to an offensive mindset for a moment. What do they need to do here to get on track and get some points? Well, I think a couple of ways. Number one, you pull out something that maybe they haven't seen before. Coaches always talk about unscouted looks. Maybe you give them something that they haven't seen on tape, and now you shock them that way. The second, run your basic playbook, but run it so well that you give your skill position guys a chance to make big plays individually. On first and 10, Joe Burrow, short throw to Smith. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that's going to bring up second down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and a run up the middle with Mixon. And down he'll go at the 25. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. Go, I just go. love watching those guys go to work. Now Burrow on first down. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Here we go. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. Now it's Burrow. This pass complete to Higgins. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. On third down, Burrow. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The show put on by these two defenses in this first half. The fireworks don't have to be just offensively. Neither one of them given an inch, and that's good coverage once again there to force another fourth down. Now here's Brad Robbins now. there on the return and the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. Throwing now Lawrence on first down and that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. Here's second and 10. Now they'll try and set up the quarterback draw here. And a pretty good burst there as he get this across midfield and down to the 46. And that'll go for a gain of 18 on the keeper. First down. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. First and 10, it's Lawrence. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. 
as his old brain remembers. When I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Second and 10. Here's Lawrence to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, congratulations to them. They come through defensively with another stop. And let's face it, this secondary, they've gone unchallenged so far in the first half. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Lawrence. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Brought down by Trayvon Walker on the pass rush. Walker was drafted because of his tools and potential down the line. A little bit of a slow start to his career, only three and a half sacks as a rookie. The key for everyone in Jacksonville, just stay patient. He's got a chance to develop into something big. Here's Burrow. Escaping the pressure right. And he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. Burrow on his toes that time as they get the first down. The sack on first down took him out of a traditional running play and put him in a passing situation, but didn't stop him from running anyway, did it? No, I was surprised when he took off. I thought, oh, he's got some space. He might pick up five, six, seven yards. He goes all the way and picks up the first. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Burrow throw. Steps away to his left. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Third and three. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. Pass thrown right back to Joe Mixon. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. And that's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. Second and seven. Now it's Burrow. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Josh Allen, what a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. So we are at halftime here on Halloween. 
As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. The Bengals drive about to get going. And Charles, a scoreless first half. How does that change how you assess things here moving forward? Well, it doesn't change it a whole lot because remember, it's still scoreless, which means you're starting from zero again. So you just have one half to play instead of two. What I would look at my play sheet, though, and see is something that maybe loosens things up for my guys, gets a smile on their faces, and gets them going to begin the second half. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Burrow looking to pass over the middle to Smith. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. From the 46, here's second and two. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. That good for 19 at a first down. Those are the type of runs that we did not see from him in the first half, but a good start to the third quarter. And I know what everyone's thinking that's watching this. They did a great job adjusting at the half. Oftentimes, you don't make adjustments. You just dial into your game plan a little bit better, and maybe they're starting to make some headway. On oh, the throw led him too much that time. It's incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Here we go, here we go. After the incomplete Ready. pass here now is second and 10. Nixon will try the right side. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. That's to the sideline and incomplete. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. This will be spotted at the 37, so it's a 47-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good, and with it, they have taken the lead. Well, they don't get a touchdown here on the opening drive of the third quarter, but I think maybe you still say mission accomplished as they come away with the lead. No, absolutely. You keep the pressure on, right? You go downfield, get some points up on the board, and hope that you've motivated your defense to take the field and hold that lead. To the made field goal. Here's McPherson to send this one away. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. And they find themselves down on the scoreboard following the field goal a moment ago. And I think even though they trail in the game now, I would consider that a win for their defense, and that's probably what they're telling the offense when they get to the bench. Hey, the onus is on you guys now. Get back out there and get us the lead back. It's a gain of 35. Uh, that's the kind of play this offense desperately needed. They've got to be saying, our defense has kept us in the ball game. We're down, but we're certainly not out. And maybe that was the spark that they've been searching for. Now Lawrence on first down. This is caught. It's Kirk. And he'll cross over out 
of bounds right at the 25. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. That's a pretty throw right there. That ball's in the air a long time, but it's right on the money on the right sideline. A really good route. Moving the defenders towards the middle of the field before breaking to the sideline. What a completion there. Big time arm strength. Very nice route. Touchdown, Jaguars! Evan Ingram, 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Jaguars have taken the lead here in this third quarter. So a very strong first drive in the second half, Charles, as they've turned that halftime deficit into a third quarter lead. And they were pretty purposeful there, weren't they? Measured in their approach. But boy, they executed awfully well, moving the ball down the field. Extra point from McManus is good. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. Touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. Yeah, they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. From the 31, here's second and five. Now Burrow, this time for Smith, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Corazade American, and his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. On first and 10, it's ETN, and he'll get what he can up the middle, three yards, and that'll bring up second down. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Here's second and seven. From the shotgun, Lawrence. Open man is Kirk, complete. It'll be a gain of five. And now two yards to go on third down. They'll run with ETN, and he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short, and yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. They run for it with Bigsby. And oh, a little spin cycle, room to run now. Touchdown, Jaguars. Take Bigsby, 32 yards. And the Jaguars will add on to their lead here in the final minute of the third. So how about the fortitude there? They're in field goal range, but they say, no, forget the three. We think we can get the first, and they wind up getting a lot more than they bargained for. And I love how you used an SAT word to describe what we just saw there, partner. That's got to be a deflated defense. You see the head down, the shoulders slumped. But we've talked about this before. Sometimes as a defense, you get so wrapped up in defending the first down line that that's your last line of defense. And once they get past that, they're gone.
touchdown. Here's McManus now to kick it away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The Bengals drive about to get going. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself how you show your team that you're still with it and how you continue to lead. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Now Burrow to throw on second down. Escapes the sack. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. And give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest game we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. And now they will throw it with Burrow. Flushed out right, and he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Mixing up the middle. Shrugs the tackle. Nice. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. I'm not even sure I know who this guy is out there playing right now. This is very unlike him, one of the most accurate guys in the league, totally off his game right now. I don't know. I was going to ask you what you pin it on, but defensively, they've been pretty solid. Well, sometimes, you know, those defenders, they get into the receivers pretty well, and if they chip away at their timing, it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 22 yards there, a first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. First down, here's Burrow. Flush to his right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Well, this has certainly turned into a showcase game for what he can do on the ground because they're just continuing to give him chances to run it, and he's earning every additional carry by putting up positive yardage on each run. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. Open man is Higgins, and he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Bengals have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. 
So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call and he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion and now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all of their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you've got another thing coming. Yeah, I and mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. Oh, now he'll try and chuck it deep left side. The flag comes in. It's incomplete. And I'm not sure he was still behind the line when he let that one go. On second down, a run with ETN. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And they get him down right near the midfield stripe. It's Lawrence. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. ETN up the middle. Down to about the 22 here. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Throwing now, Lawrence. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. That is an absolute backbreaker. That was a design passing play, wasn't a draw. You think you got him stopped, good coverage downfield, and he's able to pick up the first with his legs. Defensively, that kicks into your psyche and hurts a little bit, doesn't it? It certainly does, and, and here's the thing. Anytime you give up a first down, it hurts you psychologically, but it hurts more 
when they get it this way because you've covered everything. He didn't have any place to throw the football. He takes off running and picks it up anyway, and now you have to stay on the field for an extra set of downs. And really could have used that stop trailing here in the fourth. Lawrence to a knee, and that will write a finish to this one. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You I, like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeroes. Charles, in these lower scoring games, you know it better than anybody. Yeah, points are at such a premium, but taking care of the football is king. They play turnover free from whistle to whistle, and they come through with a victory. Yeah, and that's what won them the game, because even doing it that way, being that clean partner, they weren't able to really run away with this game. So that tells us just how important it was to make sure you played mistake-free football. That led to the victory. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.